Whew. Hey everyone, I've got a little confession to make. Sometimes when you're stuck indoors for a year of quarantine, you just go so crazy that you need to start buying stuff you don't need. And that's exactly what I did today. I got one of those nifty new AR glasses that have been hitting the market. Today we're going to try them on together. Don't need these anymore. Oh, these are already so cool. They're totally not my glasses from high school. Uh, I guess I should pair it with my phone now. Um, all right, and paired. Whoa! Oh, this is so crazy. It's like right there. Um, what does this button do? Hey everyone, welcome to Wondershare Filmora Pro. My name's Johnny, your name is the audience, and today we're going to be taking a look at this really cool HUD effect. AR glasses might still be the technology of the future, but that doesn't mean that we can't imagine what it might look like. Today we're going to break down this effect so that you can use it in your sci-fi or superhero themed projects. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and without any more waiting, let's get right into it. As you can see, I had my camera staying still on a tripod to make this effect way easier to pull off, since we don't want to complicate this one with motion tracking. I also played around with my Philips Hue lighting to change it right around when the HUD is supposed to show up. This step isn't necessary for the effect, but it can definitely help make things look a little more convincing. So I'm going to want to make my HUD effect start right around where the lighting is changing. Let's say right about here. I'll start by creating a new plane. I'm going to call this plane HUD. I'm going to make my HUD look orange, but you can choose whatever color you want. Once I've created my plane, I'll drag it onto the timeline at the point that I want it to first appear. And as you can see, we now have our orange plane superimposed over the other clip. Imagine this orange image as a holographic display that you're looking at. Which parts are glowing and which parts are you able to see through? For my look, I'm going to have an orange border around my HUD which I can turn this plane into by double-clicking the Rectangular Mask tool, switching back to the Selection tool, and dragging it from one of the corners while holding Shift. Just like this. In the Controls panel, I can click the Invert icon for this mask. I can add buttons and other things to this effect, but first, let's make this HUD look like it's actually in front of me in 3D. First, I'm going to set my plane to Add, to make it glow on top of the footage. Next, I'll add a scan line effects for style, and I'm going to use the heavy preset. Next, we'll add a quad warp effect to make this effect look 3D. You can take each corner of your image and move it around so that it looks like it's in the room with you in 3D. In my case, I want to make mine look like it's tilted and in front of me. So I'm going to draw this trapezoid shape but feel free to experiment with what looks best. Next, we'll add a neon glow effect, and I'm going to choose a much redder orange for this color. I'm going to set the intensity all the way up to one, crank up the radius a bit, and set the blend to add. Let's scrub ahead and see how this looks on our shot. Finally, I'm going to add some blur to the background of the HUD. This will make it easier to see and read the contents that we'll put on top of it. To pull off this look, let's copy our background image and paste a copy of it on a video track between our background and HUD, just like this. And I'll trim it down to only appear under the HUD layer. We'll add a curves effect to lower the brightness of the highlights. Then we'll add a blur effect, which I'll adjust to my liking. Next, let's use the freehand mask tool to draw a mask that matches the shape of the HUD. There's a lot you can do to animate the HUD effect, but we'll keep it pretty simple today. If we scrub around, there's a moment when I pretend to press a button on the screen. What we want to do here is make it so that there's a button placed right around where my finger touches, and we'll also want to animate it. To create the button, I'll copy our HUD layer and paste it on the timeline, moving it onto a track above our current HUD clip. On this new layer, let's delete the current mask 
and we're going to draw a new mask with our button here. I need to draw my button as if quad warp isn't turned on yet, since the quad warp will change where the button is. Since my character is pressing the top center of the HUD, let's draw a button near the top center of the frame with this rectangular mask tool. I can put a check mark on this button by drawing one with the freehand mask tool in the shape of a check mark, just over where my previous mask was placed. I'm going to set the mask to subtract, and if I click the selection tool, I can readjust the check mark to fit properly. I can also add more buttons to my HUD by repeating this step again, or I can add text to my HUD by copying the effect on my HUD, creating new text with the text tool, scaling it to fit well in the frame, setting it to add and giving it a color, and then pasting the effects onto it just like this. I'm also going to adjust the neon glow for this text since it's a little bit too powerful here. To make our button look like it's being activated, we can go to the clip that the mask is on and set its opacity so that it's dimmer until I touch it with my finger right here. Right before I touch it, I'll create a keyframe at 50% opacity, and then one frame later, I'll crank the opacity up to 100%. And I can also make it fade back to 50% opacity many frames later. Finally, let's animate how our HUD border first appears. For me, that's right after I press something on my phone and the lighting starts to change. For now, I'll turn off any other tracks that aren't the HUD border or the background footage. Let's go to the beginning of the effect, and I'm going to play with the HUD's scale and position. Let's set both a position and a scale keyframe at the very beginning of the effect, and keyframes for both about 5 frames into the effect. Finally, let's set one more scale keyframe about 5 frames after that. Let's set the first scale keyframe to 0%, and adjust the first position keyframe so that it looks like the effect is coming out of my glasses. Let's set a second keyframe just a bit larger than it would normally be, right around 110%. Finally, let's highlight our second and third scale keyframes and our second position keyframe and click this icon up here to convert them into smooth keyframes. I can even turn on the motion blur option to make this animation smoother. Here it is. Next, I'm going to go to our blurred footage on the second track and sometime after the HUD has grown to its final size, let's start setting a few opacity keyframes. Nothing too complicated, we just want to create about six keyframes that are all one or two frames apart. Next, let's set our first, third, and fifth keyframes to 0%. Highlight every keyframe and click on this square icon up here. Now we'll have a cool flickering into existence effect. Finally, we can use the same technique with opacity for any buttons or text that appear on our clip, just like this. Let's take a look at our effect. So, that was a look at creating this HUD effect in Filmora Pro. 
The possibilities are honestly endless, so I highly encourage you to go out and experiment with your own looks. Let us know what else you'd like to learn in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, there's no limit to what you can make. Isn't that right, Yox? Isn't that right? Ow! Why are you biting me? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> 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 <laughs>